Hello friends, welcome to Environmental Science, Unit 2 Ecosystems. Under Ecosystems, in this video, we are going to see the grassland ecosystems and its types, characteristic features, structure and functions. Introduction to Grassland Ecosystem The grasslands cover areas where the rainfall is usually low and or the soil depth uh, is poor and the quality of soil is also poor. The low rainfall in this region prevents the growth of large number of trees and shrubs, but even though it is sufficient to support the growth of grass cover during the monsoon. Many of the grasses and other small herbs become dry during the dry season and the ponds above the ground dies during the summer months. And in the next monsoon, the grass cover grows back from the rootstock and the seeds of the previous year. And a variety of grasses, herbs and several species of insects, birds and mammals are adapted to the grassland ecosystem. Types of grasslands in India. Grasslands form a variety of ecosystems that are located in different climatic conditions ranging from the near desert conditions to the patches of solar grasslands that occur on the hill slopes in the extremely moist evergreen forest in South India. And in the Himalayan mountains, there are high cold Himalayan pastures and there are the tracts of tall elephant grass in the low lying terrain belt in the south of Himalayan foothills. And there are semi arid grasslands in the western India and parts of central India and in the Deccan Plateau also. The characteristic features, structure and functions of grassland ecosystems. The first type is the Himalayan pasture belt. The Himalayan pasture belt extends up to the snow line. The grasslands at the lower level form patches along with the coniferous or broad-leaved forests. The Himalayan wildlife require both the forest and the grassland ecosystem as important part of their habitat. Here, the animals migrate up into the high altitude grasslands during the summer and move down into the forest during winter when the snow covers the grassland. These Himalayan pastures have a large variety of grasses and herbs and also the Himalayan hill slopes are covered with the thousands of colorful flowering plants and there are also a large number of medicinal plants in this region. The second one is the terai. The terai uh, type of uh, grassland consists of patches of tall grasslands interspersed with a salt forest ecosystem. The patches of tall elephant grass which grows to a height of about 5 meters are located in the low-lying waterlogged areas and the salt forest patches cover the elevated regions under the Himalayan foothills. Here the tie also includes marshes in the low-lying depressions and this ecosystem extends as a belt in the south of the Himalayan foothills. And next one, the semi-arid grassland. Here the semi-arid plains of western India, central India and the Deccan are covered by grassland tracts with patches of thorn forest. And the several mammals such as the wolf, the black bug, the chinkara and the birds such as the bustards and the floricans are adapted to these arid conditions. So uh, the specific or certain uh, birds and mammals are adapted uh, to the semi-arid uh, grasslands and the scrublands of the Deccan Plateau are covered with the seasonal grasses and herbs on which its fauna is dependent. So the fauna is dependent on the seasonal uh, grasses and herbs. And it is also teeming with the insect life on which the insectivorous birds feed. Here the teeming, uh, it means uh, the favorable insects for the insectivorous birds uh, are available in the semi-arid semi grassland. 
Next one is the solar grasslands. The solar grasslands consist of patches on hill slopes along with the solar forest on the western guards, the Nilgiri and the Anomaly ranges. This forms a patch of grassland on the slopes and the forest habitats along the streams and the low-lying areas. Grasslands are not restricted only to the low-lying rainfall areas and the grassland types form when clearings are made in different forest types and some are located on the higher steep hill slopes, higher steep hill slopes with patches of forest that occur along the streams and in the depressions also. The grasslands often uh, come across uh, with uh, repeated fires. So hence, uh, due to the uh, firing uh, in that area, uh, they do not permit the forest to grow further. How the grasslands are used? Uh, farmers who keep cattle or goats as well as the shepherds who keep sheep are highly dependent on grasslands for uh, uh, grazing and the fodder is collected and stored to feed the cattle when there is no grass left for them to graze during the summer season. The grass is also used to thatch houses and form sheds. And the thorny bushes and branches of a few trees that are found in the grasslands are used as a major source of fuel wood. And then, a overgrazing by huge herds of domestic livestock has degraded many grasslands. And the grasslands have diverse species of insects that involve in pollinating crabs. And there are also carnivores which feed on these insects, such as the small mammals like shrews and reptiles like lizards and birds of prey and amphibia such as the frogs and toads. So all these carnivorous animals help in controlling insect birds in the adjoining agricultural lands. The threats to grassland ecosystems. Overutilization and the use of common grazing lands by the rural communities has led to the degradation. And a major threat to the natural grasslands is the conversion of grasslands into irrigated farmlands, agricultural lands. And in the Deccan, Deccan, the grasslands have been altered to irrigated farms and are now mainly used to grow the sugarcanes. After uh, the continuous irrigation, such lands become saline and useless in a few years. Uh, more recently, many of these residual uh, grassland tracts have been converted into industrial areas and uh, this provides uh, short-term economic gains. Short-term economic gains is provided, but uh, uh, what we have to see here is the, uh, but it results in the long-term economic and ecological loss. Here, increasing the number of domestic animals reduces the naturalness of the grassland ecosystem and uh, leading to its degradation. So due to the uh, overgrazing by cattle, sheep and goats, the grasslands are unable to regenerate. And uh, most grassland ecosystems are highly modified by the human activities and lighting of repeated fires affect the grasslands adversely and changing the grasslands into other forms of land use, other types of land for various uses and uh, such as the agriculture, tree plantation and industrialization forms a serious threat to this highly productive ecosystem. So the grassland ecosystem is a highly a protective one, it has to be protected. Uh, what will happen uh, if our uh, grasslands disappear? So if our uh, grasslands are lost, we will lose a highly specialized ecosystem in which uh, plants and animals have been adopted to these habitat conditions over uh, millions of years. And the local people will not be able to support their livestock herds. Further, the cheetah is extinct in India now and the wolf is now highly threatened 
and the black buck and shinkara are poached for their meat and the birds such as the beautiful great indian bustards are vanishing now and unless the grassland species are protected they will vanish from their shrinking habitat and if these animals and birds are killed or their habitat is reduced further that extinction will rapidly follow further the extinction of a species is a great loss to mankind it is really a great loss to mankind and the genes of wild grasses are extremely useful for developing new crop varieties and moreover the new medicines could be discovered from the wild grassland plants and it is also possible that the genes from the wild herbivores such as the wild sheep uh, goats and the antelopes may be used for the development of new strains of domestic animals how the grasslands ecosystems can be conserved uh, the grasslands should not be overgrazed and the areas of grasslands should be closed for grazing and it is better to collect the grass and feed the cattle by key, keeping them inside the inside their shed and a part of grassland in an area must be closed every year regularly uh, so that a yeah, rotational grazing pattern can be established and the fire must be prevented and rapidly controlled from uh, the, the ecosystem area and in hilly areas the soil and water management in each micro catchment area helps the grassland to return to a, a natural and highly productive ecosystem to protect the most natural undisturbed grassland ecosystems the sanctuaries and the national parks must be created and the animals such as the wolf black buck chinkara and birds such as the bustards and florican's have now become rare all over the country hence they must be carefully protected in the few of the national parks and wildlife sanctuaries in india and hence we need to create an awareness among the people about the great value of grasslands it is important so far in this video under uh, grassland ecosystems we have seen the introduction types characteristic features structure and the functions of grassland ecosystems thank you